Hey everybody, welcome to Bods of Mayhem Hour. I'm your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. The Bod Father, and as always, we bring you guys awesome interviews. And today it is an honor to have TJ. She is the vocalist and keyboardist of the Nearly Deeds. The Nearly Deeds, have a, they, they've released their highly anticipated new EP called Revenge of the Nearly Deeds. Uh, you can get it now on vinyl, CD, digitally for purchase, and stream via Cobalt Music. And uh, we're going to be talking to TJ about this new EP. Plus, they was on Big Dog 97.9 this morning, so I want to give a shout out to them kicking off here. So, TJ, how's it going? It's going good. Yeah, it was an early morning today over at Big Dog. It was awesome. They were so nice. Got to play an acoustic set, and uh, we drove overnight to make it there for 9 a.m. <laughs> Jeez, 9 a.m. and already pouring out the vocals and everything. That's that's crazy. That's really crazy. Yep. <laughs> yep. The yeah, they live streamed it, too, so uh, it's on their Facebook page. In case you missed it, you can check it out on there. The things you do as a band, folks. <laughs> yeah, it's not often that you get a rock band up that early in the morning uh <laughs> we were in omaha last night drove overnight you know the guys kind of drove let me sleep in the back we had a lot of fun this morning and now we're playing at blackthorn tonight and it's going to be a great show and walking around joplin hanging out here all day so <laughs> it's a really cool city i'm really liking it here what's impressed you the most about making this new ep revenge of the nearly deeds what's caught your eye about if anything tj with revenge like we really wanted to go for like a heavier sound kind of back to our original sound our full length invisible tonight we did a lot of pop punk on and really we're really proud of it but you know I, I think the fans were just more into the heavier songs so we just wanted to stick to that direction and we're having a lot of fun playing them live people are getting into them every night so that's kind of what we're going for do you like this version of the nearly deeds compared to the pop punk do you like the heavier side of this is this something you guys want to continue with possibly <laughs> I mean, this is really working for us, you know, it's, and we have our fans to thank, you know, we did a pledge music to kind of fund the record since we're independent. And um, I do kind of miss playing the punk shows and playing some of our punk songs. And I know when we start playing longer, that's, and we'll probably add more of the punk into it, add more piano moments into the set. But yeah, right now this, this is really working for us. Any songs off this EP stand out more to you than any? I know these are like picking your own favorite kids or your favorite things that you like to collect, but I mean, are there any songs sticking out more? Yeah, no, it's, it's hard to pick a favorite. I think as far as live, I really love performing the title track, Revenge. It's just, you know, the whole reason behind the song is that we're still out here doing it, living, living our best lives, and that's our revenge. You know, success is the best revenge. So performing that every night has been really um really fun and really awesome and the fans are really liking that song as well how much growth musically have you seen yourself and plus this band go through up to the release of this ep or album to album or has it just been more of a personal growth for for all of you i think we're so much more polished you know just as a band i think personally we're all just happier i guess i don't know like we've really fine-tuned what we used to have we look back on the shows and the music it was it's still the polished kind of grunge, still the kind of that aggressive pop kind of sound we've always had, but in so much more of a polished way. We pay a lot more attention now to the little details and putting on a great show. And now that we've been performing together for like years, it's almost like riding a bike. You know, we're, we're kind of like a well-oiled machine. We go on tour with bands and that they always say that they're like, you guys are just a machine. Like we we're on and off the stage, we perform consistently every night. And so I think we've just gotten so much better as a band, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> <laughs> do you guys do anything differently during the writing and recording process to, to help keep your minds open and, and fresh to, to new stuff, to not let your music get stale? Do you guys do anything differently, possibly? We actually just go into the studio with an open mind. We know that things are going to change, so we try to really not complete songs until we get to the studio. We come in there with some bare bones, some ideas, and that, that allows us to be open for new because the song's not even really finished. So it's just like we go to our, our producer, John King, and we're like, hey, give me something to try because I'm stuck here. Or, you know, this is completely open. Like, I want to do something different. Like, and that makes the song sound so much better in the long run. John King, did he produce this new EP for you guys? He did, and he's done all of our records. So we've been working with him since the very beginning. He directed our music video for Never Look Back that has over, you know, almost seven... 8 million views, almost yeah. 8 million now. Yeah, it's got quite a so bit. So he directed actually. that. 
He directed Diamond in the Rough that's online now, so check that one out. Oh, he's just been, he's like the uh, sixth member of the band, as far as I'm concerned. So working with him in a recording studio and things like that, does he push you guys hard and then just step, you know, step in when he needs to, or does he just let you guys go? Or Let's talk about that a little bit. You know, now that we've been working with him for so many years, he really does know how we work and how to get what he wants out of us. And we kind of like joke around in the studio a lot. He'll be like, are you sure you were good with that take? Do you want to do it again? (laughs) Um, Let's do it again. You know what I mean? Like (laughs) he doesn't really like push, you know, he's not like a, he's not like a Stanley Kubrick, you know, he's not going to just make you do it a hundred times if you don't need to. He's like, if we got it, we got it. So it's been really fun, but definitely a learning curve with that. Cause when we went into the studio for the first EP, we'd never, I would never really even been in a recording studio before. And, um, you know, I was singing completely operatic and just like all this weird, you know, he was just like, you need to like roughen up your voice a little bit. And it's taken me a while. And definitely all these years of touring and performing live have really given me kind of the rocker kind of edge that I'm going for in my vocals. Mm -hmm. And now that I have that, he doesn't really need to push me so hard for it because we just perform, we've performed live so much now that it's just like second nature. You know, I see a lot of bands going the EP route. Do you guys like the EP route besides putting out a full length or, or what? I mean, it's cost effective for an independent band and you get to load it full of just your best tracks and you get to get it out to the fans sooner because you're recording less and True. you're spending less time in the studio and less money. So in those ways, yeah. Um, a full length, I think, would be awesome because you can still have those killer, like, you know, radio ready singles and, and tracks and whatever. But you can also do that one punk song you want to throw in there or that one extra ballad that you're really dying to record, you know, and just but it's more so people are so single focused these days. I think making the album is almost more for either the super fan or just for the band themselves to get that music recorded that they are that they really love. TJ, what do you hope the fans take away from your guys' music in general, just when they start to listen to the Nearly Deeds music? You know, we want people to feel empowered. We want them to feel like they belong, that we understand them, that we love them and support them, and that they have, like, a real place when they come to our shows, like a real safe space to just be themselves and um, just positive, uplifting kind of themes. It's all about getting over the negativity in your life, not dwelling on it. So we've got kind of those messages in it. And it's always awesome to hear stories from the fans of how it's a certain song has even changed their life or meant so much to them or helped them through a difficult time. So that's been uh, really humbling to hear. And we we just hope to get that out to as many people as possible. What can fans expect at a show from the Nearly Deeds who have not got to see you guys perform live yet? When you come to see the Nearly Dead, it's going to be energy from start to finish. It's going to be sing-along, fist-pumping, head-banging, rock and roll, and you're going to have a good time. I know we just touched on this just a little bit, but but we're living in the digital era of recording albums on social media. Do you guys like this? Do you think it helps out an independent band like your guys, you know, like, your, like yourself, to get music out and to, to get known a lot quicker? Absolutely. I mean, it is... There's nothing we can do about it, right? You can't go backwards. So as begrudge, you know, as begrudgingly as it is or whatever, I don't think I'm not using the word in the right context, but as much as you like, we love to hate the internet and how it's spoiling the industry, it's not going away. So you either have to go along with it and use it to your advantage or, you know, or not, you know, so we really got lucky with never look back going viral. And now that it's got millions of views and it's just, The reason that we're able to keep touring and have reached so many fans, new fans are discovering it every day because now everyone pretty much finds new bands on YouTube, Spotify, or Apple Music, you know, like a playlist, or maybe their friend will show it to them, but everybody does everything online now. Mm -hmm. Everyone has their phones on them 24 hours a day with the internet right there at their fingertips. So it's been amazing. And we we just met somebody at the coffee shop today. He's like, oh, your band, let me look you guys up, pull it right up on your phone watch the music video right there. Hey, I, I like you guys. I'll come see you. You know, it's like, bam, new fan right there. You can show them your music right away. You know, it just, it's been awesome. It's been very good to us. We've been able to make fans all over the world. And when we first started doing this, I never imagined that would ever happen. Yeah. I think some bands too, like if they had to go back and do like they did in the old school days of self-promoting, you know, like flyers and, and things like that, the way it used to be, I, I don't think a lot of them would stick around. I mean, that's just me personally, because it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work to do this. I mean, we still do 
stuff like that, but it's not that effective. The internet right. is more effective because so, everybody, that's where everybody goes to find their information. Everybody's always on the internet 24 seven. Someone is, <laughs> you know that. <laughs> yep. Yep. Support wise. Is there a country or a region that stands out more or surprises you that you guys get support from that, that region or area? Oh my goodness. We get a lot of support. I feel like there's a lot of fans in the UK that are always asking us to come over there, which we'd love to do someday. Um, Mexico is kind of surprising. Germany, Brazil, people, we get people from all over the world messaging us. And we, when we do the pledge music campaign, I think we, we sending packages to Australia, Philippines, Thailand. I think we sent one to Saudi Arabia and it was like the most difficult package we've ever sent. Cause they like, don't let anything in. We're just trying to send somebody a CD, you know, and it got sent back to us like four times. So all over the place. What does the Nearly Deeds bring to the table for music that's not out there as of right now, if anything, possibly? You know, I think we have a great mix of pop and grunge. We are influenced by 90s alternative rock, like Uh Foo Fighters, Smashing Pumpkins, and bands like that. And I also look up to singers like Kelly Clarkson, Avril Lavigne, Christina Aguilera, stuff like that. And I, I just definitely think like, and, and then I'm with the piano aspect of it, you know, influenced a lot by Evanescence and stuff like that. So, I mean, I think that's definitely what we bring to the table. It's just the powerful vocals that, I don't know, it's not that you don't really hear a lot of that these days, but I mean, I keep it really clean. And cause I just, I don't have like a super grungy voice. It's just how my voice sounds. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And a lot of people like that. A lot of people who like classic rock and old school, old school school kind of band they really love hearing that clean vocal understanding the lyrics and not having the noisy screamy stuff you know it's a little different in the rock world these days so what made you want to become a musician what was that spark for you well, what was that you know what did you say this that that's exactly what i do what i want to do right there i mean I, I think i've always wanted to do it my whole life i've played piano my whole life i've always wanted to write music for film i got a composition degree from the university of south florida And while I was in college studying, you know, classical composition and and voice, just came across punk rock. And (laughs) I was like, that's what I want to do. Like, started listening to Taking Back Sunday and Fall Out Boy and (laughs) all of that. And and the distillers and I've always loved garbage. They've been one of my big influences for for a long time. And I, you know, I started getting people together and trying to make a band and, you know, the rest is history. That's awesome. I, you're the first person to actually mention the distillers on here, and the distillers is freaking amazing. Yeah, they're a big influence of mine, definitely. Anything that they put out, I buy. Anything that Brody puts out, I buy. <laughs> Love. I, I will wish the distillers would still play. You know, maybe they'll get back together. Who knows? <laughs> I know that whenever Brody plays, she doesn't play a lot anymore, but she'll play distillers songs live. But that's Last time, I think it was just L.A. only, you know, if you've got to fly out there if you want to go see her. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> you guys like video games, horror stuff, things like that, so. Yeah. If you could be any horror icon, who would it be? If I could be one? Yes, if you could oh be. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, there you go. Ah. Wow. Okay, so let's think of some icons. Who would I be? If you want to be one, it's going to, like, tremendously mess someone up who would it be <laughs> ah i don't know mm, maybe like the bride of frankenstein there's not a lot of female monsters hmm. oh morticia adams yeah that's not he's saying what horror icon would you want to be i'm with my bass player right now so <laughs> he's chiming in like you be her be her and i'm like no 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 <laughs> who, like a there's no that there needs to be more female murderers and horror movies that's they're a, all men yeah that's a good thing that, that's yeah exactly that would be a twist on a lot of stuff i mean honestly that would be pretty cool yeah i mean bride of frankenstein she has fabulous hair i think i could work that look i think that'd be awesome <laughs> tj if you could work with any musician that has passed or is still alive today or any band that's broken up you'd like to get back together for a day or so who would it be if anybody i really want to work with butch Vig. I would love to go into the studio with him and do an album with him as the producer. I just a forever fan of everything he's ever done Mm -hmm. and all the iconic albums that he's been a part of. I just think it fits with our inspirations and our sound. And so if you're out there listening, Butch, we are, (laughs) (laughs) 
hit TJ <laughs> we up. We want to do a record with you. <laughs> yeah, hit TJ up. <laughs> For the fans that have took your guys' music into heart, what's it mean to you guys when you receive an email from a fan or prior to the shows or after the shows? They tell you that your guys' music has pulled them through a bad experience or gave them inspiration to overcome obstacles or it's just made them to relax with the already bullshit that we go through. What's that mean to you? It means everything. It's it's very inspiring to me personally. I think I just want fans to know that like I need that just as much as they need our music. You know, like we need that to keep going as well. The music industry isn't always awesome. Mm. And we've been doing this for a really long time and there's highs and lows, you know. So in you know, maybe I'm having a low point and then some fan will say something and I'm like, you know what, I gotta keep doing this. I know that we have something special because that doesn't happen. I, I don't think every band has that happen to them. And we we have so many people come up to us and say what our music has meant to them. And, and we really are emotional about it and want to put something out there that's meaningful and uplifting. And it's, and it's also very humbling because when I started writing songs, when I was a little kid, like did I ever think that I would change someone's life or help them? I don't really think so. I think we were, you know, wanted to do this as, you know, a career and wanted mm. to have fun mm. and make music that we liked, but that having kind of the result of that be helping people was kind of like this unexpected, like blessing in disguise. It's just so humbling. And, um, it definitely inspires me to keep doing what we're doing. Yeah. To me, and I, I put my twist on this and I hope this comes off cool. The way I'm going to say this music to me is like comic books. <laughs> It's a way of getting away of everything, you know, to escape reality, to get away for a couple of hours, because a lot of folks, man, that that's how they deal with things. Comic books was like that for some folks. Music's like that for other folks. So it's a great escape to get away from reality for a couple of hours or just for however long you want. Definitely. I agree. Folks, Revenge of the Nearly Deeds is out now. Go out and pick it up. They're on tour right now. With Blame Shift, and I think that concludes on November 2nd. So you want to get out and check these bands out. Really freaking amazing groups. I'm not just saying that because they're on my show. I just tell it like it is. These these groups are very, very awesome for what they do. So always, always support local bands, non, non-signed bands, stuff like that, because they have the dream just the same as everybody else does. So TJ, how can folks stay in touch with you guys? Buy some merchandise, tour dates. How can they do that? You can find us on... Definitely, if you've never heard of us before, check us out on YouTube, youtube.com slash the nearly dead, uh, the nearly deads.com. We're on Facebook. We also have a merch now store. We have vinyl records available, physical copies of our, all of our music, t shirts, and everything. And that's uh, merchnow.com slash the nearly dead. And I'm an idiot. I've been calling them the nearly deeds. Uh, I'm, see, this day's been long for me already. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. It's okay. Ah. It's okay. So we at least it at least it wasn't the the uh, nearly beads. That's uh, probably the worst that we've gotten. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's been a long day already. So uh, before I let you go, would you care to do a promo for the show? Sure. Okay. What's up? This is TJ from the Nearly Dead, and you're listening to Bod's Mayhem Hour. Everybody, stick around. We got some great music coming up, and I want to hear these interviews right here on Bod's Mayhem Hour and Uber City Radio. Thank you so, so much, TJ. Thank you for having me. I, I hear the 